Schizophrenia consists of a group of psychotic disorders characterized by profoundly distorted thoughts, perceptions, and moods. People who suffer from schizophrenia often exhibit bizarre behavior and withdraw from the world around them. There are several subtypes of schizophrenia. In this video, you will see why Peter has been diagnosed as suffering from the subtype called disorganized schizophrenia. People with disorganized schizophrenia often express incoherent thoughts and ideas. Note that although Peter's individual sentences are grammatically correct, taken as a whole, his thoughts are rambling and often incomprehensible. I got TV tooth they call it. TV tooth is when they surprise you and they put little needles under your scalp. And they listen to you for years if you know it or not. Really? I didn't know it. And they have this really fantastic, expensive equipment they touched me with. This. Uh, they said to me, uh, hey, we can, uh, we can uh, check your head, you know, for uh, um, if your bump shows up bruised and, and, and the electricity is a little different across the scalp of your scalp, we'll guarantee you Social Security from that injury or on its own. It's considered like super palsy, but it's must it be it would be uh, muscular dystrophy kind of thing. And so uh, I said, no, I'll think about it. And the next day he comes back and says, Did you think about it? You know, give me a ride, you know, and, and all that. I said, Well okay, I'll look at it. Okay, let's go. And then they put the needle in. The last one they put in, they went like this. So when they did it, I had a thought that when they pulled them out, they pulled them out burning, but they left a little teeny little barb in all, every one of the places they put me. And they recorded it. And one person who wanted it didn't. Someone else sold it to someone else. I don't know who, but um, they're able to give a response back because of the, the, how thick the dental is in my teeth. How thick the dental is, and with the, uh, the needles, they're easy to focus a heavier field of pickup reception because of all the fillings I got. And so I... Uh, Who's listening? I, um, I think it's people like at Stanford and... Uh, Technicians, uh, wealthy technicians, wealthy technicians, and people that do stuff like NASA or any of that kind of stuff. Ames Institute. I came right up to them and tried to sell them that last little one. But for the amount of money they didn't have, I should have just gave it to them. <laughs> I like watching uh, Dr. Uh, I mean, Mr. Rogers, and I like uh, my family, and I know it was a problem where my dad would just say, Peter, just go, leave him alone, because of the way the situation was. He never had too many arrests, so I'm the one that's got to go. A little I had of rough-ups, you know. You know. Hey, what'd you do that for? Why did you go like this first? I wanted to make it green. <laughs> you know, you go, go to my friends, right? Mm, mm. And then they make it all green spot there, you know? <laughs> Awful, you know, but... Uh, uh, that's just how adorable we were. Peter prides himself on his architectural ability and spends many hours designing tools and even communities that he believes will help solve social problems. In the following interview, he discusses some of his recent ideas. Can I go out and I get those things I was talking about? Sure. sure. And I come back and we spend the time just filming them and I tell what they are. Sure, that'd be great. I'm, I'm into architecture. Oh. Concepts written here. Okay. Is a factor, a factor solved where you can actually get your your turbines running 
by by these many gen motor generators generators no these are generators creating enough current to turn a master turbine to run a whole power source without a dam okay. or without solar energy and um, I spent off and on many years in college and finally got this for an answer you can uh, it's a briefing like this is explanation for how when the generators spin and they have a motor there that spins one of the generators gets feeds the uh, motor which in turn runs a whole series of these generators once it gets going and it has a lower point where you can start to get it going and here's the big time generator bringing you all the juice you want by by when you get this chain change of of, of uh, chain <laughs> the, the chain uh, to spin this generator Okay. When you spin it, it creates a current. Now, this ser preceding series of motors and generators is run turns into perpetual motion for you once you start it by spinning a generator to get the motor going. And then, when the motor gets going, it turns a series, and one of the series generators brings back electricity to the motor, and well, keeps it going. And so that's instead of using a riverbed at all. So when a, 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 you, uh, when a hydronuclear power plant or when an atomic power plant starts to wear down and they need to store water and they need another source of electricity, they'd have one. If I was to remove trees and replant them somewhere else in land that I bought, I would do it for the name of the tree, the nature of the tree and all this here. And uh, with that happening, uh, I put a new one in its place so the house and the street look a little farther apart from their normal, with the big tree taking up and making it a, hop, a happy hollow for Batman and Robin and the, the beginning mechanics and Girl, I can see you that far away. You look more interesting. Can I come up? You know, it'll all disappear. A whole lot of social problems. If I do it my way, maybe. My way is I remove the tree and I take care of the tree and I pay them like $400 towards their rent if I had money. Peter is currently living in a shelter for mentally ill and homeless people. While he is disconnected from many aspects of reality, you will see that he remains aware of issues of social interaction. Note the loose associations in his cognitive behavior. I need a rest. You know, my machine needs rest. And I, I was thinking, I wonder, you know, I'm always seeing all these things. I wonder what people do, you know, for... Uh, for things and uh, to know a town better, what proficiency has gone on with pre-law and, and some such things and wonder what it would be like. I've had about 11 encounters of uh, sexual activity in my life for 41 years, so I treat them like champagne. You know, uh, I'm authentic, but I may need to find someone more around the room, you know, and actually being injured in my crotch, but it's not impossible, but I thought sexual therapy is something I never studied, and, and what kind of clinics have for such things like that, and then I said, well, you know, just, Pete, just go get a girlfriend, he's on me. come up to her, you know, start talking, maybe get some more, it just takes longer with you, <laughs> yeah, so, I need to wash my hair, too. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hey, I'm, uh, I'm not the best comedian, but I'm glad to spend time with you. I'm Peter Hassinger, and I'll probably be staying in Oregon most of my life. <laughs>